Hey guys! So I haven't recorded in about two weeks and I do apologize for that. I have been dealing with some crazy stuff lately. My anxiety levels have been through the roof. I have a major announcement and a couple of other cool things or whatever that I want to talk about. Music related, obviously. Don't mind my dog in the crate. He was misbehaving before. First and foremost, if you have been keeping up with my videos, you know that I am a senior in college. So the past few weeks have been really stressful, putting into perspective the fact that I'm going to be graduating in literally like two and a half months. So I really have been wanting to get the ball rolling and figure out what I'm going to be doing after graduation. I have been interning with a music company based out of Orlando since December. I've just been doing some PR work, um, assisting the main publicist there. I wasn't 100% sure if they were going to be hiring me after graduation or not yet. You know, I've been over a thousand miles away from home for the past four years, so part of me really wanted to be able to find something back up home. But the other day, I got off the phone with the founder and my boss, and they decided to offer to take me on the team as a freelance publicist for after graduation, but they're allowing me to go back home. So I'm extremely ecstatic about that because I'll be able to probably pick up another part-time gig or something temporary in the meantime. For everybody who's been keeping up with me, like this is, I'm finally going to be a music publicist and I'm very, very, very excited about it. And for the record, I'm never going to stop being a journalist, <laughs> at least as far as I can see. I really love what I've been doing the past almost two years getting to meet some artists, getting to write about them, you know, just my editor lets me be as free as I want with my ideas when they come to me. So it's something that I'm very, very grateful for. And because of that opportunity, um, I'm now officially on my way to getting involved in this industry. So I'm just, you know, I'm so grateful and so excited at the same time. And I can't wait to see where everything takes me and I can't wait to keep making updates and getting to share everything with you guys. So I wanted to make this video the past couple days, but I ended up celebrating a little bit too hard Friday night and it cost me all of Saturday. If anybody has any all day hangover tips aside from the brat diet and Gatorade, it would be much appreciated because nothing I tried was able to be kept down until about 8 p.m., which is kind of insane. So with that and me talking about my journalism adventures, I have a new one for you, if you couldn't tell by the title. Last week on Wednesday, I decided to follow up with Miles Kennedy's publicist about an interview that he said he could probably get some time for me for regarding Miles' new album, Year of the Tiger, that's coming out soon. He literally responded to me that night and goes, okay, 1.30 tomorrow. And I mean, thank God my classes allow for that. I skip class. Honestly, I mean, me interviewing a rock star at this point is kind of more imperative to my career than a class on criminal justice policy. So I had him send me the album. This was the second time that I got to listen to an album weeks before its release, which was is very exciting. Writing a review about it is really fun. I did it for The Pretty Reckless last year. Year of the Tiger is coming out on March 9th, and it is Miles Kennedy's first solo album. I am writing a review for it for Alternative Nation, so I will update you guys when that's up, but you guys definitely gotta check it out because I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the best review I've written for an album or even a concert thus far because there's just so much description I'm able to come up with because of how creative the album is. If you haven't heard the song Year of the Tiger then definitely go check that out. Also he has two other songs out called Haunted by Design and Devil on a Wall. If you listen to these three songs you will catch on to the fact that there is a acoustic folk Americana country, southern rock-esque vibe to the songs. He played several instruments on it, the banjo, the mandolin, the lap steel guitar. If you liked Chris Cornell's Higher Truth or Robert Plant's Carry Fire, then you are really gonna like Year of the Tiger. It's nothing like Miles has ever done before. It's nothing like Alter Bridge. It's nothing like his work with Slash and the Conspirators. I check out those couple songs and let me know what you think, if you've heard any of them and if you like it or not and pick up the album when it comes out, and he's also going to be touring for it. So I had the pleasure of speaking to Miles for about 20 minutes on the phone, and we had a really good discussion about, you know, some details behind the album. There's a really, really pretty dark story behind the inspiration for the album, so read the interview and you'll know what it's about. And yeah, so that was really exciting. That is my fourth interview that I've done. It's fourth with a singer. They've all been with singers so far. Miles is somebody that I've seen perform a plethora of times. I've followed him and Slash from Hollywood, Florida all the way up to New York over a span of 
three months in 2015 when Roll on Fire came out. It's really exciting getting to finally have a conversation with people that you've seen perform so many times. So the reason Chris Cornell is mentioned in my title is because there have been some Chris Cornell updates that have been released kind of recently. Vicky Cornell did an interview for Good Morning America regarding Chris's death and everything that was going on with him prior to it. This is her first public speaking that she's done since he passed away. He got addicted again in the last year of his life, which is extremely upsetting because to think that if he hadn't fallen back into that, then he'd still be here. And it wasn't even his fault. His doctors who were prescribing him Ativan should not have been prescribing him that. There are certain things that former addicts should not be given to fix current problems or if they are, they need to be monitored a lot more closely. And ultimately, it led to what it led to, and he's not here anymore. There's even a screenshot of him sending an email to a friend that he slipped back into his addiction habits. He says he relapsed. On the other hand, today, actually, um, a new song, You Never Knew My Mind, was released that he had written something to do with Johnny Cash. So it's bittersweet because it's really eerie hearing you know, something that was never actually released before he passed away and that it was written so shortly before he did. But at the same time, it's nice that people are still putting out the music that he didn't get to release yet. I didn't really mean to make this video turn dark, but Chris Cornell is on my mind every day. If you've watched up to this point, check out my Miles Kennedy interview. I'm going to link the Alternative Nation link below in the description box. And stay tuned for more updates. Thanks, guys.